Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Rocket Man. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome Rocket Men and Rocket Women. We are each going to be in this game running our own private fledgling space agency that is racing to get into Earth orbit, get up to the moon, and finally get to Mars. And we do it by deck building. Each of us starts with the exact same deck full of different projects we could launch. Manned spaceships, space stations, satellites, space hotels, and um, e uh, you know, asteroid mines and even colonies. Oh, it's on here somewhere. Oh uh, yeah, manned bases. So, uh, like any good deck builder, we're going to shuffle up our decks. We start with a hand of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we are off to the races. Although, before we start, there is actually a tiny bit more setup that I have to do for you. But let's just go ahead and give Jen one, two, three, four, five, six her starting hand as well. So, um... I've already got the draw deck full of all kinds of investments we can make with our, our little private enterprise here. And in fact, also in this deck, there are some various disasters striking our world, like pandemics that are spreading. Um, but anyway, before we deal with all that, I've, I've set this deck up, pulled some stuff out here, got my starting hand, and we have to get some special additional rules. Game comes with a deck, and every time you play, you shuffle this up and put two additional rules into effect that will make the game feel different than the last time you played. Let's see, and so this time, we have got, at the beginning of each player's turn, if there are five or more threat cards, five or more, uh, we have to discard a card from our hands. Okay, so that means we are a little bit more invested in trying to fight these threats than we normally would. Okay, and the other one is... Player with the most computer science cards and tokens at the end of the game earns three bonus points. Okay, so there's a little bit of friendly competition in the computing region. All right, and you know, it could have been, oh, uh, we get our hands, after we, we race, the first time we complete a mission, we increase our hand size, which is a big deal in a deck builder. Or we can, um, once per turn, we can burn a card from our deck, <clears throat> you know, thin our deck out and make 20 bucks. Or um, if we abort, oh, you have to permanently lose the cards that are discarded. I haven't seen that one. That's terrifying. Okay, so every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of two special rules. Those are the ones we got this time. And also, each player gets two secret goals that is are going to be worth points at the end of the game. We have this public goal for points, but in addition to that, in secret, I want to be the savior of mankind. I want to fight the thread cards. Folks, remember I said right up front, this is a prototype. There are going to be little goofs and typos here and there, like any prototype. I'm sure they'll fix it for the... But anyway, I, I get additional points for fighting threats, like this pandemic. Okay. And that's actually a problem for me, because in this game, Jen, because we both want to fight threats, because they can mess us up, I might have to worry about that Jen might fight them and beat them to me. So that's something I have to bear in mind. And my other secret goal is space communication. Okay, so I want to get a satellite in orbit around the Earth. I'll get one additional victory point at the end of the game. I want to get a satellite around the moon and get one extra point. And if I make a colony on the moon or on Mars, I'll get one extra victory point. And if I am the first, um, for, if, if I'm the first for any of these, then I get two additional points. So, this definitely gives me some goals to think about. All right, Jen, meanwhile, she gets two secret goals as well. We'll worry about those later. I don't even know what they are. And we are off to the races. I am the first player. Here's how it goes. I've got a hand of cards. These cards are all multi-use. I can use them to launch an orbital shipyard project or Try and do some manned space flight. Now, if I play these as a project, down here it tells me what I have to do. If I want manned spa a spa manned spaceship in Earth orbit, I need to have three total thrust. If I want to go to the moon, it's five thrust. If I want to go to Mars, it's ten thrust. And that'll take a while. Um, and also, uh, when I tr attempt to do any of these missions, I will draw three, four, or five cards from the mission success deck, which is the push-your-luck element of the game. I'll deal with that later. And if I succeed at manned space flight, then I will get a permanent double rocket booster for the rest of the game that I can use on all subsequent missions. 
And if I get a satellite into orbit, and remember, I do want to do that because I've got goals for global communication, I will get a single rocket boost. And let's see, I need to have two rocket thrust and, or to go to Earth or three to go to the moon. So this might be what I go after first. That might be my first mission. Here's another manned spaceflight mission and a space station I could build and another satellite. Okay. That's my starting hand. Now, these are multi-use cards. You can use them as a project, and you can have one project going. Or instead, you can ignore the project and use them as a source of resources. This is some chemical engineering. This is 20 bucks. This is rocket boosting I need. So, okay, what am I going to do with these six multi-use cards? Like I said, I want to get going. I want to get my satellite in orbit, because remember, I want to be the first to put a satellite in orbit around the moon and around the Earth because I'll get bonus points if I beat anybody else there. So, let's say I am going to declare to the world, I am starting this satellite program. And what that means is I put it over here on my mission site. Now, to put a card on my mission site, I need to spend 10 bucks. And I will spend... Uh, all right. I will discard this space station to get 20 bucks, 10 of which I will spend here, and the other 10 I will spend on putting this manned spacecraft... Well, this could have been a project for manned space flight, but instead I'm going to use it as rocket boosting. And I spent 10 bucks to get this here and 10 bucks to get that there. I am now halfway towards launching this mission because I need two rocket boosts. I've got one because I use this card for its rocket uh, capabilities rather than its project. Alrighty, but I still need one more rocket before I could try and launch this project. And it just so happens I've got an orbital shipyard card, which gives me 10 bucks and uh, it will provide more boost. Let's say I'm gonna spend the 10 bucks off of this card and put this in my launch pad as well. Okay, so I'm ready. I could launch this mission to either no, I, I could launch this mission to Earth orbit because I've got two total rockets here. If I want to go to the moon, I would need three total rockets. But let's not worry about that right yet because I still got two cards. Although, unfortunately, ooh, oh, these cards do help. Because, well, it's, a, it's another satellite mission or it's a manned space flight mission. I can only have one mission on the go. So these cards won't do any good. They can only be used for their resources. And both of these provide computer science support. And here's the thing. If I want to launch a mission to Earth orbit, I get a boost towards success for every computer science I put on my launch pad. So I want to get both of these on my launch pad because that'll give me two boosts plus the two rockets and then I'll launch. But here's the problem. I'm out of cash. I have no more money. I spent all my money just getting all this stuff repaired. And I didn't spend any of that money actually deck building, which is a deck builder. So I've left reusable parts or um, asteroid laser ablation or wireless energy transfers. All these things I could have bought. Instead, I'm not buying any. I'm just preparing for this mission. But I don't want to launch the mission until I get these. So there's a couple things you can do with your cards. You can create a new mission. You can, you know, uh, by spending 10 bucks, you can spend 10 bucks to put stuff on your launch pad to support that mission, or you can spend money and sometimes resources to buy cards. Like an ex uh, example here, to fight this worldwide pandemic, which if I do it, I'll get two points. Although remember folks, I have delusions of being the savior of mankind, so I'll get three points instead of two. To do that, I would have to spend 50 bucks and I would need some DNA. Now, I don't have any DNA cards. I don't have 50 bucks, so I cannot buy this. And bu buying this means it, uh, you know, it, it saves the world, but it clogs up my deck. This doesn't do anything for me, but it means I get points at the end of the game. It's the equivalent of you know getting uh, estate cards in Dominion. It just clogs my deck up, doesn't help me at all. Um, so I don't necessarily want to do this right now, but because I... Want to be the savior of mankind? I do want to do it later. I don't have 50 bucks. I don't have any DNA cards. And these uh, computer chips... Uh, so the other thing you can do on your turn is with cards, you can just go on ahead and discard them. Put them into the holding area, which is where you put cards when you spend them. It's also where you put cards when you buy them. I am not going to put these here because I want to save these. Because any cards I don't play or discard will be in my hand and I'll carry them over to the next round. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm Dunsville. Uh, done playing cards anyway. Now, the last thing you can do on your turn, after you're all done with whatever you want to do with your cards, you can attempt to launch a mission if you've got enough rocket power. 
and I do. As you can see, I needed um, a total of two, and I have got one, two. So what the heck, let's have some fun. Let's launch a mission. Although, I guarantee you, it's going to fail. Uh, so I'm not going to get very far, but here's how launching a mission works. You, uh, although, ugh, no, I'm not going to launch a mission. Because here's the first thing I have to do if I launch a mission. I put this over here, and I say whether I'm launching a mission to Earth, orbit, or to the moon. I don't want Jen to know where I'm going right now. Because there are bonuses for being the first. And if I declare right now that I'm launching a mission to Earth orbit, then I am declaring to Jen what my intentions are, and then she might use that information and swoop in ahead of me and take away the bonus I would get for getting there first. So while I could launch a mission, and I'd probably abort almost immediately because it's very unlikely I would succeed, I'm not going to because I do not want to tip my hat to Jen, to what my plans are. So we'll wait on that. So we're saying I'm done, and now at the end of my turn, I refill my hand back up, so I draw one, two, three, four. Hopefully I've got some money so I can get this computer science. Uh, so, yep, and so next turn, I'll probably launch and see if I can pull it off. Okay, so that was my first turn. It is now Jen's first turn. And oh my gosh, she's loaded. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks. Wow. Jen cannot start with much more cash than that. So she could start preparing a mission and put stuff on the launch pad like me, and then she'd have to spend money to do it. But Jen says, uh-uh, I'm in no rush. Uh, she's fine. If I go ahead and invest in space, Jen's going to invest in life here on Earth. She is going to spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks to buy a whole bunch of cards. And she's going to be very happy about that. So... Now you can see down at the bottom it says how much they cost. And you know, this is a collection of cards. It's you know constantly cycling through, coming from this deck that was set up. And it was set up specifically so that there's um, these disasters kind of spread evenly throughout. In addition to these that come and go, there are always small rocket boosters, large rocket boosters, and ion drives. Now, you can only buy one of any of these a turn. And these basically just give you a lot more rocket thrust than you get off of your starter cards. I put both of my rocket cards, you know, into my mission that I'm launching. Jen, she has, what was it? I've totally forgotten now. Was it 60, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60? So Jen could spend um, 30 to get a small rocket booster, and that will really give her a heads up, because with one card on her launch pad, she could get a lot further on missions. And then she'd still have 30 bucks left over to get L Asteroid Laser Ablation, which can provide 20 bucks for her in the future with all this laser breakthrough technology, but it could also protect us from rogue asteroids that might strike the Earth, because that's a disaster that can come up. Or with the other 30, Jen could invest in wireless energy transfer. When you use this card, take one card from your discard pile and place it at the top of your deck, giving you more control, and it's another source of a lot of cash. Oh, Jen is definitely buying that. So, that was 30, and as soon as you buy a card, a new one comes out, and oh my gosh, it's Asteroid! It's Deep Impact! It's Armageddon! They're coming! Somebody get Bruce Willis! I guess that's what this card is. Um, now, when a new card comes out, it comes like this to indicate that it is a new card. Because you can buy a new card that just came out on your turn, but if you do, that ends all the purchasing. You can't make any purchases after that. Now, it doesn't matter. Jen doesn't still have 50 bucks, so she couldn't purchase it anyway. Plus, to fight this, she would need to spend 50 bucks plus computer science. So this is interesting. The other, th so Jen has 30 bucks left. She could buy this laser for 30, which when you play it, it instantly lets you defeat the asteroid and save a lot of money. And so Jen would get two points. But Jen doesn't care about that. She doesn't harbor plans of being the savior of mankind. Jen's going to spend her other 30 bucks and get some small rocket boosters because there are only so many of these. In a two-player game, there's only four. So uh, Jen is trying to snag that. And now after all of that business, Jen still has one card. It's a satellite card. And if Jen wanted to, she could declare this is going to be her first mission, to get a satellite somewhere. You'd expect that's a good first mission. The problem is, Jen has no more cash. She blew all her cash on her investments. So she still got this card. She could keep it in her hand, or she could just discard it so that she can draw more cards and get through her deck faster. I think that's what she's going to do. So she's going to choose to discard this card, and her turn is over. And at the end of her turn, this is no longer a new card, and Jen gets the remainder of her deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. So she gets the rest of her hand going to next round. Oh, by the way, let's take a looky-loo. I mean, Jen had so much money, she didn't really care, but let's take a looky-loo at what Jen's secret goals are. 
She wants to be first man. All right, so... Uh, do any mission to the moon, get a point. Do any mission to Mars, get a point. And if by the end of the game you've done at least one mission to moon and Mars, get three additional points. So this is five victory points here. Because Jen has this goal, I don't think she's going to waste any of her time doing Earth orbit stuff. She wants to make sure she gets to the moon and gets to Mars because there's a lot of bonus points for her. And then space tourism. Oh, well, okay, maybe she does want to get to Earth. Because she gets a satellite around Earth, it's plus one point, same as it is for me. And if, if she is first on any of these actions, she gets two points. So she wants to get a satellite around Earth orbit, she wants to get a colony on Mars, and she wants a manned flight to, uh, to uh, Mars. Okay, so that's what she is all about. That's her life goal. Put that stuff over there. As a reminder. Okie doke. So, Jen's turn is over, and at the end of her turn, she draws six cards. So, it is my turn again. Okie doke. So now, I got all that money. I want to spend 20 bucks to get both of these, you know, this extra computer science towards my first mission. Boom, boom. And I had to spend 20 I will go on ahead and spend the 10 from this space hotel where we're not going to invest in that. And it said, we just, because we aren't we're pursuing this, we have 10 bucks to spend and 10 bucks to spend. Alrighty. So, and now I've got 10 more. 10 is not enough to buy anything. And I don't have any more computer processing. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and discard this, but I'll keep this in hand so I have more money next round just in case. And I'm done. I still haven't done any deck building at all. I just invested everything in this first mission. And it's time to launch, everybody. Let's go. This time I'm going to do it for realsy reels. So here's how it goes. You, you come over here, and depending on how many correct science upgrades you've got for your mission, you get a boost. To go, I declare now, I'm going to Earth orbit. And Jen says, oh, interesting. Because remember... Jen wants to be the first to have a satellite around Earth orbit. And now she's worried that I might be first of, in first of her. Although, again, she could be first in any of these others and still get that two bonus points. So anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm declaring that. And because to get to Earth orbit, we need more computer science. I have two of them. I start out two steps ahead. That means I've got to move forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need a total of six to pull this mission off. Let's see if we can pull it off. These are the mission success cards. Or well, more often than not, they're mission failures. Uh, but this deck is basically composed of... There's one level four. There's four value threes. Six value twos. Five value ones. And two zeros. Two goose eggs. Here's what I'm going to do. Because I am launching to Earth orbit, I'm going to get to draw three cards. And those three cards have to total... What was it again? One, two, three, four, five, six. If they do not, I fail, and all of these cards are lost. They all go to the discard pile. And that would be a huge, painful loss. Because obviously, I've invested a lot of time and resources getting ready for this mission, while Jen has been investing in her overall operations. So, let's see how this goes. I need a total of six. And I want to see a big, I want to see a three, or even, if I'm crazy lucky, somewhere in here, there's a four. Show me a four. I'm drawing three cards total. It's a one. Oh! Eee, the only thing worse would have been a zero. Okay. So now, I have a choice to make. Every time while I am working on launching a mission, every round, or every card, before I make the next card draw, I have the option of aborting. And if I abort... I lose cards from my uh, launch pad equal to the number of cards I've drawn minus one. And so if you do the math, that means if I abort right now, one card I've drawn minus one means I lose nothing. So there's no harm in attempting a mission. That's why I was thinking in the first round I might have attempted the mission, but by doing it, I had to tell Jen what I'm all about. So, if I abort now, no harm, no foul, other than the fact that I've clued Jen into what I'm doing. But she already knew what I was doing, because she saw me put two computer chips here. So that, she knows I'm going for Earth. Because if I was going for Mars, I would have tried to put DNA uh, science on my launch pad. So, I could go again. And hey, I could go again. But if I draw all three of these, and they don't total six, I lose all of this. If I stop right now, I don't lose anything. If I draw one... And it's not a three or a four. And then I abort. I will have to lose one of these. I don't want to lose anything. So I'm aborting now. I'm getting out. I'm a coward. 
It's not how you conquer space, but that's how you keep your astronauts alive, I say. So um, we're, we are stopping right there, and uh, I'll try again next turn. So that was it. I kept one card in my hand because it had some money, and so I'm going to draw one, two, and hey, here's some more money, and then reshuffle my deck. Three, four, let's see, how many am I here? One, two, three, four, five, six. And now you'll notice my deck is almost completely gone. I only have seven cards in my deck because Rocketman has a very interesting flow in that you know you, you fill your car deck up with cards, but then you pull them all out to prepare for missions. And so your deck gets pretty thin for a while, but then once the mission is over, all the cards come back into your deck and your deck gets fat again. So anyway, so that was my second turn. I tried, it didn't work out. Fingers crossed for round three that I will get into space. Alrighty. It, in the meantime, though, it is Jen's turn. And what has she got? She's got 10, 20 bucks. 20 bucks is not very much. Jen could buy reusable parts. That's pretty nice because normally, after you complete a mission, all the cards that were applied to that mission go into your discard pile and then you have to start spending to get stuff out here again. If you have reusable parts on your launch pad after you successfully complete a mission, one of the cards on your launch pad can stay there. So that's one less, you know, that saves you 10 bucks. And it provides computer science if you are wanting to do earth-based. And Jen does want to do an earth-based one because she does, she gets an extra point if she gets a satellite in orbit. Oh, now here's the thing. Jen can see I've committed so much to it. Jen knows I'm going to be first. I mean, it's it's kind. I mean, it'd be it'd be a really far out thing. And so if I launch, oh, let's see. So I didn't. I, I boarded. So anyway, though. But if I launch and make it all the way up here, if this were a satellite, I would claim this spot. The first player to do it gets one point. Anybody else doesn't get anything. Alrighty. <clears throat> but yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, plus, whether you are first or not, everybody gets a nice little bonus of plus one, a permanent plus one rocket boost that we can apply to all future missions. So that's a very nice. But I didn't make it. And so Jen could try to race and complete this mission first so she could get the bonus point for being first. <sighs> and because she does, and, and, you know, and plus one extra point because, she, because of her space tourism goals. And. She does have a satellite mission. Although there's a problem. This satellite mission coming here, you see how it has it has a computer chip on it? If this is the basis of the mission that she sets up for, this computer chip will not provide her a boost. The way I got a boost, boosts only come from cards you put in the uh, launch pad. So I think Jen is... Let's see, what else does she want to do? She wants to get a base. She wants to make a lunar base. Has she got her lunar base here? Which, yeah, she does have her man base. So Jen could say, you know what? She's going to spend 10 bucks, and the you know the lunar base itself will provide the 10 bucks she needs to declare her first mission. And she's declaring that she's going to try to make a base on the moon or on Mars. Now, to do this, though, she needs 10 total thrust. That's a lot of thrust, which means she's going to have to keep investing in these upgrades. But what the heck, she's going to go for it. So she had the 10, and so that means she has 10 bucks left. And since she's going to the moon, she wants chemical sciences to apply. She has no chemical cards in her hand. But she will spend 10 bucks to put this man's face. So this is the first of the 10 total rocket thrusts, the 10 total rocket power she needs to launch this mission. Jen is not starting small like me. She is going big. But it's going to take her a while. All right, so anyway. And so she still has these three cards. They're not helping at all. She's just going to discard them to go through her deck really quick. Alrighty. So that was it. And now she has to refill her hand. There's nothing to draw. So she takes her discard pile. Oh, whoops. I forgot, by the way. Uh, you, you play stuff into your holding area when you use them. Then you move them to the discard pile at the end of your turn. Which I should have been doing. I forgot to do it. I'm sure Paulo mentioned that in the Klingon subtitles. Did I mention up front? Watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on? Yes, I did. Which is why you should watch the Klingon subtitles turned on. Jen, I think she's just going to focus more on deck building. Get some more stuff. And go for a more long-term goal while I'm just trying to go quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boop. And so we'll see what Jen does next turn. But anyway, back to me. So I'm going to try and launch again. And there is no more computer chips that I could put here to give myself more of a boost. There are, however, reusable parts. I would like that's going to help me. So I would like to buy that, please. That will cost me twenty dollars. I will spend these two. There's uh, ten plus ten is twenty, and I've got some reusable parts. 
And let's see, then I still got, oh, oh, but a new card comes out. And it's climate change. Alrighty. And now, I still got 30 bucks to spend. You know what? I, the asteroid is still coming. I'm going to Bruce Willis this, and I'm going to save the world. I'm going to spend 30 bucks and get the asteroid laser technology. And then another card comes out. And Research Institute. And then I'm, I'm done. I got nothing else. I can't do anymore. And now, I'm going to launch again. Because remember, I can launch, and if I board on the first card, no harm, no foul. But if I draw a high card, I might want to make a go for it. So let's see what happens. I'm launching. And now, succeed or fail, once I launch, that triggers the end of my turn. I'm not going to do anything else for the rest of the turn. So, first card is a 1. I'm aborting. <laughs> Abort! Yep, there's a lot of aborts early in the game. But when you draw... I mean, the worst thing is drawing... Yeah, drawing a 1 is an easy abort. But if you draw a 2, that's scary. If you draw a 3 or 4, you're going to continue. If you draw a 1 or a 0, you're going to quit. If you draw a 2... It takes bravery to keep going. But, um, you know, a two could be, you know, the next step. Anyway, so anyway, that's it. My turn was over very quick. I just did a little bit of deck building, and now I refill my hand. One, this is all goes in my discard pile. At the end of my turn, then I draw. So one, now i got to reshuffle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And it is Jen's turn. So what have she got here? Ten. 20, 30. Jen has 30 bucks to spend. And remember, she wants ke chemical processes. So she can spend this. Um, she could spend. Uh, this will provide 10 bucks. That could uh, get this on the launch. Because you need 10 bucks to put something on the launch pad. That means Jen now, because she has one chemical here, she's got a boost of one. But that means then she only has 20 bucks to spend. And there's nothing for 20 bucks. So I don't think Jen will do that right now. Instead, she'll play all of these to spend 30 bucks. And with 30 bucks, she is going to buy more rocket boosters. Because she's going to need them to get to the moon. All right, so that was that. And she's just going to discard these. All right, so at the end of her turn, that's that. She draws six. Two, three, four, five, six. Easy peasy. Back to me, back to my turn. And did I get any of my cool cards? Yes, I did. I would like to spend, please, $10 to get reusable parts on this mission. And now that leaves me with, tw with 30 bucks. All right, so what am I going to buy? Uh, nothing. Well, I could buy rocket boosters. No. Oh, yeah. Mm. I but I mean I could skip these entirely because if I had fifty bucks I could be getting large rocket boosters which provide three rockets. Uh, well, Jen's buying these. I better grab one quick while I can. So I'll just go because eventually I'm going to go to the moon and Mars as well. So I'll. Sp oh wait, no, I have forty bucks. I can count. I've got forty. Count them. Forty bucks. And with forty bucks, I'm going to spend all forty bucks to buy either the Hyperloop system or the Research Institute. Research Institute has no special power, but it's a wild card. This can give you a boost on any mission, whether you're going to Earth orbit or the Moon or Mars. Hyperloop generates 20 bucks in the future, and when I use this card, I can draw one card from... Oh, my hand size gets bigger! I want both of those so much! Screw you, Research Institute! Oh, we're going to have a Hyperloop. Boom. Which means a new one comes out. And it's big data. Oh, if I had 20 bucks, I'd buy it, but I don't. So my turn is over. It's not over though, folks, because we're gonna try we're gonna attempt again. And interestingly, now I've got a third computer chip. So I'm starting with a boost of one, two, three. I only need one, two, three, four, five to make it. So let's see. Show me that three. Show, if I if I have that three, then all systems are go. If I draw a zero, forget about it. If I draw a one, now that I've got three, I might go for it. Oh, but the risks are great. But the rewards, the rewards. Let's go for it. Oh, whoops. Let's not have cards face down. Oh, oh dear. Let's uh let's try to shuffle this up a little bit more. <laughs> All righty, here we go. And one. All right, so if I keep going, I've got one. That means I need one, two, three, four. So if I draw two twos or a three and a one, I'm fine. But right now, there are still two zeros and four ones in this deck. So chances are pretty good I'll get twos and threes. There are more positive cards than negative. If I abort now, nothing problem. But if I draw one more and I don't like it and I abort, I've got to lose one of these? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a coward. And especially because here's the important thing. I know I'm not racing with Jen. If there were more players around the table right now, 
I guarantee you, somebody else would have started with a satellite and we'd both probably be racing. And I'd be really worried, I should make this launch now because I got to get there before they do. But since Jen has declared she's going to the moon or Mars, I don't have to be in a rush. I'll wait. I don't want to take any chances. Okay, so that was it for me. I draw my hand back up. One, two, three. These go over there. Shuffle them back up. Four, five, six. Done. Jen's turn. Boom. What has she got? She's got 10, tw uh, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks. Jen's rolling in the dough. And with her wireless energy transfer, when she uses this to take one, when you use this card, take one card from your discard pile and place it on top of your deck. Ooh. So Jen can get to one of these cards quicker, like, say, her new rocket booster, so she can get that stuff into play faster. All righty. So Jen's going to keep on doing deck building and slowly work her way up. So Jen's got 20. And because um, when you use this card, she's going to use the 20. She will put her rocket boosters so she will have them in her hand next turn guaranteed. All righty. What else? So that's 20. Oh, um, you know what? She's going to spend 10 bucks to get this rocket booster installed. So she's got 20. Oh, mm. and she could spend this 10 bucks to get this chemical installed. And, you know, plus, if she gets, the sooner she gets out of her deck, the faster she's getting to her money cards. So she will spend 10 to get that installed. So now she's got three of the 10 rockets she needs, and she's got one boost for one chemical science. And then she's still got 20. So she's got 40 bucks to spend here. And she will uh, invest in the Research Institute that I did not. All right. And so at the end of her turn, all these things go over here. And then she draws. And what do you know? Hey, she can uh, get her uh, her plans up and running that much quicker. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's her next hand. And back to me. All righty. Bippity boppity boop. And hey. Oops. And by the way, a new card came out, Global Internet, another really nice card. Okay, so first of all, folks, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to play this, and I can take one asteroid impact from the display. And, uh, and but if I do that, I do not get the 20 bucks. So it's one or the other. Unless the card says, uh, when you use it, do stuff like when you just saw Jen do, normally it's this or this. So... I can stop this Asteroid Impact, which will be worth two, plus a secret X1 for me. Although, wait, yeah. And normally, to save the world from this Asteroid Impact, I'd have to pay 50 bucks in computer science. But instead, I can just use this laser. But if I don't use the laser, that's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars. 90 dollars. I could buy an ion drive. Whoa. But you don't know, no, I've got to save the world. I've got to save the world. Especially since, remember, there's this special rule that if at the beginning of a player's turn there are five or more threats out here and they are building up, then um, I would have to discard one card from my hand at random. I don't want to do that. So I, I made the investment. I'm going to save the world. So I'm playing this specifically to stop this asteroid impact, which now will clog up my deck because I'm committed to sa keeping the world safe from asteroids, I suppose, or something like that. But hey, it's worth one, two, three points because I am the savior of mankind. So anyway, that's a little bit less, but I still got 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks. And one of them is my Hyperloop, which when I use this card, I can draw a card from the deck. All righty, so I'll get another card in my hand. So let's go on ahead and buy something by using that Hyperloop system. I would like to spend twenty dollars to. Oh, by the way, a new card came out, and it's backup systems. But I want to invest in global internet. Not. Oh no, no, I cost thirty bucks. So here's an extra ten. So, and that comes out. But because I use the hyperloop, I get another card, and it is. Oh, it's odd. I don't need. Alrighty. But I've still got twenty, thirty, forty bucks to spend. Hmm. And let's see. So I'm tempted to buy this backup system, particularly because I know Jen wants it, because I see that Jen wants chemical-based cards, because that'll give her a boost to get to the moon. So if I take this, I'm preventing her from getting it. And if I put this on um, yeah, the launch pad, during um, the launch move marker, one space launch. So this is basically a backup system. It gives me an extra boost. Yeah, I'm going to buy that with my last money. And just like, oh, I wanted that! Because you can see there aren't any of these. All right, so that was that. That was a big money turn. Boop! And I am done. Oh, wait, no, I'm not done. I'm going to try and launch again. 
And let's see if I get that big number this time. Or we'll see if we abort one more time. All right, here we go. Oops, why are these cards face up? And it was going to be a four. Oh, well. Probably not going to be now. Here we go. Boom. Again with a one. All right, and what, what am I starting at? I'm starting at one, two, three. So again, I need one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I feel bad for you folks. It, the, the, the discretion is a better part of Valor. I'm doing great job building up my deck. I'm getting, I mean, and if I wait and get um, that other card I just bought in here, I'll, I'll have an even bigger boost, or I could go for it. Or I could go for it. Nope, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a coward again. Discretion, Valor. Alrighty. Okay, so that was it. Jen's turn. And she's got 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks. Nope, she's got 30 because she is going to install her next rocket booster. So now she's got one, two, three, four, five. She's halfway towards launching her moon shot. And she'll spend 10 to get this orbital shipyard out here as well. So now she's up to six. Okay. And. She will spend 10 to get this chemical up here. So now when she eventually goes, she has two boosts. So that's pretty nice. And then she's down to 10 bucks, which isn't going to do her any good. So she's just going to discard all of this. And, um, and she can't launch yet, so her turn is over. She draws six. So this time, she didn't do any deck building for the first time in the game, I think. Five, six. But she is now getting ready for a really big moonshot. Back to me. Back to my turn. Where's my hand of cards? I did not refill it. One, two. Three, four, five, a six. All right. So there's my height. Right. So I want to use that Hyperloop because it lets me draw another card. And it's my only special card. So I'm going to use that to uh, see there's nothing else for me to put on the launch pad so i've got 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 bucks and hmm, 80 bucks i will oh i could do in uh, espionage but no 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 what is the next thing i'm going to do when i eventually complete this i think i'm going to be done with earth i want to get to the moon and i want to get to Mars or the moon. I, mean, I never have to go to Mars to get all my bonus points. So the moon is all about getting more chemical based cards. There aren't any more of them that are out here. Hmm. But you know what? I have so much 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I'm going to spend 70 of it and get an ion drive. And, uh, you know, because there's only three of them in the game, and that immediately gives me four rockets. So that gets me almost halfway to Mars just with a single card. And I have 10 bucks left over. 10 bucks won't buy me anything. But hey, I used the high proof. That let me draw another card, which gave me another 10. So that's 20. And with my final 20, I'll invest in big data. Okay. Boom. Boop. And let's try it again. You guys have been very patient. Hopefully, this is the launch. All right. Again, I start with a boost of three. And it's a two. All right, all systems are go, folks. I am not being a coward this time. We're going to continue. I got two, one, two. I need one, two, three more. Uh, I could bail. You've seen me bail several times, but this time I am not aborting. We are moving on. Two, one, two. Okay, I could abort again. But if I abort now, I will lose one of these cards. They'll go into my discard pile. I'll have to spend to get them back out there. But I can't fail. There's only two zeros in this deck. Only two zeros. So this is a two in whatever chance... I'm feeling lucky, folks. Third card. Whoa, oh, wow. That was a one. And I made it. Okay, it took a while. But Elon Musk has made it into orbit. I have completed this mission. And so I take this and I mark that I've gotten one point. Hooray. And I get this little bonus, which is a permanent plus one rocket. So now that I'm done with Earth Orbit and I'm trying to get into... I mean, I've got this Ion Drive. That's going to give me four. Plus, this is going to give me five. Just like that, I'm going to be able to get up the, the uh, power to get to the moon very quickly. Nice. Plus, secretly, I have an extra bonus point. All right. So that was that. And normally, all of these cards would go into this card pile, except I had reusable parts. So one of these can stay. And I will just keep the uh, manned spacecraft. So... I'm one step closer. If I keep the computer chip, 
then that means I'd be going for, if I keep that, I'd be going for another Earth-based thing. But nope, nope, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to the moon. So I'll leave that there. All these others get discarded. At the end of the turn, this goes over here. I draw one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we have done it, folks. The first successful mission. Could have probably done it sooner, but since I didn't have any opponents really making me race for it, I took my time, and we did very, very well. All right. And it is Jen's turn. And so she wants to spend 10 bucks to get this research because that's another boost for her, for her eventual mission. And she's got 20, 30, 40, 50. And the wireless transfer, when you use this card, take one card from your discard pile and place it at the top of your deck. Okay. So, which means, oh, and unfortunately, that was a turn when, ah, shoot, there's nothing really good to put in her deck. She almost might want to wait for this. Because if she doesn't, and she, all right, so she's got 40 bucks, and she uses 40, then next turn, she can use this to get it quicker. But it's still at the top of your deck, not to her hand. So I think she'll just go on ahead. So that's 50 bucks she has to spend. Oh, and this should have been over here from last. Oh, no, no, that's the 10 she just did to put her research. So she has 50 bucks. And I think the time has come. Jen is ready for some industrial espionage, which isn't quite so bad. It just means you can copy a card that your opponent has on there. Uh, right, so that's it for her. She needs to refill her hand. So, oh, she can take something. Uh, ah, she's not particularly bothered. I mean, because, you know, I mean, most of her deck is over there. She's got a very small deck, but she's getting closer and closer. And when she eventually does launch this, when she is successful, when she has the 10, she can go for it. She gets to draw four cards, but she needs to get all the way up here. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Since I was the first player to do a uh, Earth-based mission, I also get this token, which isn't worth anything unless I might have a secret goal that says if you were the first person to do anything in Earth. So anyway, so I took that as well because a uh, mission has been completed there. First player to do a Mars mission gets a point. Same for the first player, or, I'm sorry, uh, to do a Mars mission or a Moon mission. Also, when Jen eventually does this, when she completes it, she'll get five points and her hand size will increase by one for the rest of the game. So that's why Jen figured, you know what? I mean, it's going to take longer, but getting here will be such a huge boost to have a permanent extra hand size. So anyway, Jen draws her hand of six for now. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's back to me. And, oh, whoops. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. My satellite should have also gone into the discard pile. Let's just say it didn't come into my hand when I reshuffled everything. And here we go. So, and this is starting to clog my deck. There's nothing I can do with that thing. Unless I get a card that lets me remove cards from my deck. I and mean, even if I do that, I'll still score the two points at the end of the game. So, if it's time for me to go... Oh, and what? Ah, this should... No, that's the thing I saved. So... Okay, the only mission I could launch right now would be manned space flight to any of the three places. I've got my ion drive, so just like that, I could do a manned space flight to the moon, and I could start launching that immediately. So that's interesting. What the heck? Let's do it. Although, I mean, really, what I want to do is I want to get a satellite around the moon or a, a colony on Mars. So, uh, oh, by the way, oops, a new card should have come out. Okay. Hmm. So if I've got this, if I put it over here, I could start trying to work on a Mars mission. I do want to get a colony on Mars. And I've got an ion drive, so that's going to get me there in a big, big way. I mean, I also need 15 boost to even try to launch. So that's interesting. But in the meantime, if I just think about the money, I've got 20, 40 bucks. Because this time there are no asteroids to get. And when I use this, I can place a card on my mission site. So, oh, I could start a mission without having to spend 10 bucks. I don't like the missions I've got here, but I'm going to do it. I'm. Let's see. Let's go for manned space flight. I, 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 later on, I will decide whether it's going to be to Earth, the Moon, or uh, Mars. So I got to do that for free because of my global internet. And I've got 40 to spend. And by the way, you cannot split the, this money between buying cards for your deck versus preparing missions. It has to go one place or the other. This could go towards preparing missions. This could go towards buying. But right now, I'm going to spend 40 bucks, And I'm going to get... Oh. Ooh. What should I get? 
Backup system. Um, right, give me an extra uh, boost. Or afterburner, remove this card from the game and then advance a marker one space on the mission track. You can use this ability even after drawing your final mission. So if I didn't quite make it and I need that one extra. Ooh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But I think I'm just going to go with backup systems. All righty. Which means another one comes out. I spent my 40. I've got a couple of cards. <sighs> But here's the thing, I want to put my Ion Drive over here, but I don't have any more money to spend. I'll keep it in my hand and uh, get it set up next time, but I'll go without that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my next hand. And I'm starting to do a manned space flight. Because hey, the first player to do manned space flight gets two points, even if it's in Earth orbit. And I'll get a permanent boost of two rockets. So, plus the one I've already got, that means I'll have three right from the get-go for having completed these. And I could really, that'll really give me a big jump start on the future stuff. Because these are permanent bonuses I've got. So anyway, so that was that. It is Jen's turn. And, alrighty. So. <clears throat> okay, so I've, I've totally forgot, lost track how much Jen has here. Jen has one, two, three, four, five, six. Jen needs four more rockets before she can launch this thing. Hmm. But this industrial espionage would let her copy one of mine. So she will put that. That's going to cost her 10. So now she needs three more because she's copying mine. And so with 40 bucks, she will... Let's see. Oh, and if she spends this, when you uh, use this card, take one card from your discard pile and place it on top of your deck. But there's nothing in her discard pile. Ah! All right, say lovey. So she'll, she'll spend both of these to get another small rocket booster because that'll be enough to get this going. So there she goes. And then these she doesn't have any use for, so she'll finish with that. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay. And that's my turn. And what do I got now? Okay. So I want to spend 10 bucks to get my ion drive into play. And by doing that, Jen knows I'm not going to Earth. Well, actually, it could be. I mean, it's way overkill because I've got four plus one. I've got five. But I only needed three. So Jen could guess I'm going to the moon or I'm going to Mars because I've got enough to launch this moon mission now because I've got four plus one is five. Um, but if I'm going to the moon, I want to get some chemical stuff installed and I don't have any chemical stuff. So, but, but I do, I wouldn't mind getting the reusable parts in, installed there anyway. So, although, if I don't use the reusable parts, then they... Well, no, they aren't worth money anyway. When I buy this, I can put one... All right, so oh, I can buy a card and put it at the top of my deck so I'll get to it quicker. Hmm. All righty, so I've got 40 bucks to spend. And whatever I buy goes to the top of my deck. So, hey, I wanted the Afterburner before. Let's go on ahead and take it now. So that'll get me going quicker. And then I would like to get this installed, so I'm just going to go ahead and discard this. And then I'm going to draw... One, two, three, four, five, and I'm done. So you can see, turns go very quick in this game, which is a good thing because, you know, there's a, it's a lot of work to prepare for a mission, certainly if you do a big mission like what Jen is doing. Okay, so Jen still needed three. She doesn't have it, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40. Jen has 40 bucks to spend. Oh, whoops, a new thing came out. Ooh, designer drugs. This would let Jen cure a plague, but then it would clog up her deck, but it's also a source of 20 money. How much did I say she has? She has 40. Um, yeah, what the heck? She will get some reusable parts. That costs 20. And then a new thing came out. And it's storage batteries. Oh, she'll spend 20 bucks to get those storage batteries. Okay, so she is done. You know, permanently remove one card from your hand or discard pile and draw one from your deck. So start thinning your deck. Jen could really just get down to the nitty gritty here with that one. All right, so that's it for her. One, two, three. And she might get that immediately and start being able to thin her deck even more permanently. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's hoping. She wants to see that rocket she just bought. She does not. So she will not be launching next turn. Drat. Okay. My turn. And all righty. So I'm going to the moon, which means I would like to spend 10 bucks to get this chemical. All right, so now I've got everything I need. I've got five. I've got one boost, but I should spend I should spend twenty and get this afterburner and this reusable parts here as well. So that'll help also. 
And then I've got 20 bucks left over, and when I do it, I get to draw a card from the deck. Oops, a new card should be out here. And I'll spend the 20 bucks. Oh, if I had 30 bucks. Ooh. I want the desired drug so I can cure the pandemic. So we'll save the afterburner. I'm just not going to do that. So I had 10 bucks more. So here I've got 30 to get the designer drugs. So I'll be able to cure the pandemic next time. Boom. All righty. And I'm not launching yet. I could. I could launch. What the heck? Let's just let's just uh, do a dry run. See what happens. I have one boost because I say I'm going to the moon because I've got the one or I've got the one, uh, two, three, four, five, and let's just draw. If I, if I draw the four, I might go for it. But I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm drawing four cards. If I draw a three or four, we'll see. Maybe I'll go. But I probably won't. Oh, come on. So, one, two, three. Now I need one, two, three, four, five, six. And I get to draw three more cards? Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, let's keep going. One, two. Wow, I made it. Whoa, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I have just established a manned space flight to the moon. That gives me one, two, three points, and it gives me a permanent uh, two rockets. Right. So where is that one? There we go. So I've now got combined three total rockets, one from here and two from here. So that's going to help me boost, and I got those points. And I was the first person on the moon, so I got a bonus point for that. Boom. Okay. All right, can't complain about that. Although, here's the problem. All, almost all this stuff goes away, but uh, because of the reusable parts, I'll leave the ion drive, so that's prepped and ready to go again in the future. And one, two, three, four, five, because I kept the afterburner, and I am done. Wow, that was a surprise. Boom. I am zipping right along. Now you can see, there are a bunch of other things, increasing your hand size, permanent on staff money, resources and whatnot, that you can get depending on what other types of stuff you're doing. But anyway, uh, Jen finally says she will get her rocket booster. This is it, folks. If I recall correctly, oh wow, she doesn't even need that rocket booster because now her industrial espionage can copy my ion drive. Whoa, so she doesn't need to do this. Is there anything else she wants to get on here? No chemical stuff. And, um, right. Oh, okay. She does want to spend 10 bucks to get the reusable parts on the launch pad before she goes. Now she doesn't need to put this here. So she can instead use this for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. She's got 50 bucks to spend and permanently remove one card from your hand or discard pile. I think she's going to, I mean, she doesn't care about manned spaceships. This is gone. Her deck just got tighter. And she's got 50 bucks to spend, with which she will get... She could complete either of these, but she doesn't want to clog her deck up. She's going to get large rockets for later. Because next up, after she's done with this, she's going to, the, to, uh, to Mars. All right, Jen is going to launch. Finally, thanks to some industrial espionage of my, uh, my ion drive. So what does Jen have? One, two three she has three boosts it's her first time going to the moon three boosts let's see what she's got show me what you got and i forget does she have any other special powers or all right the espionage is copying no all right so three boosts and she just got a draw and so she starts with that three well she saw you saw how well i did going to the moon and i didn't i only had a boost of one that was crazy let's see what she does boom a two jen says yes let's do it one two and then she says, a four, one, two, three, four. And then she says, boom, a one. She didn't even have to draw them all. She has made it on her very first attempt. Jen has made a moon base. Moon base 1999, baby. All right, one, two, three, four, five points. And her hand size has permanently increased. Jen now has a hand size of seven. And her reusable assets mean she can keep something. I think she'll keep the industrial espionage so she can keep copying my ion drive. And the rest of this goes, and the end of her turn, and then she draws one, two, three, four, five, and then she's got to reshuffle. Oh, this goes into the deck as well. Oh, no, that goes here, right? Her new hand size, and then she has to reshuffle. And six. 
And phew, okay, the space race is on now. And you know what, folks? I think that should give you a pretty good idea of the game. So I'm going to stop right there. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about the game, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.